You know security is hard, so let's assume We're probably gonna get pwned by noon But if we all start to get the basics right We might not fully get pwned until tonight Hey everybody, it's Brian with the 7 Minute Security Podcast here. Thanks for joining me. I'm excited to start pen testing the OWASP juice shop with you. Uh, but let me just back up a little bit and talk about Docker. Uh, last episode, we, we spun up a Docker container with the OWASP juice shop in it. And some of you said, wait a minute, how do I know if it's running? How do I shut it down? Uh, let's take a look at my Netstat output. And as you can see, port 3000 is open. And that's what uh, juice shop runs on by default if you set it up the way I uh, showed you in the previous episode. So if we want to get some stats on what Docker containers are running, we can use Docker space stats. And then uh, once we've had a look, we can do a control C to exit out of this screen. And then we can stop it with just Docker space stop, and then you can hit tab to get tab completion on the containers that are running. So I'm gonna stop my juice shop container, and then I'm just gonna take a look at the Docker stats command again to ensure that the container is not running. And then we'll just start it up again with docker space start space name of container. And once again, our juice shop is up and ripe for the picket. All right, let's get burp fired up. I'm just gonna use the free version. And I'm just gonna create a temporary project and take all the defaults. And then one other thing I'm gonna do right away that trips me up flipping every time is under the proxy tab I'm going to uncheck intercept so that once I start browsing websites the traffic just flows through like butter and burp suite doesn't act like a traffic cop stopping everybody at a red light. Now one of the thing you'll notice here is that I am using something called foxy proxy which you can just google and uh, uh, download for your firefox or ice weasel and what this does is it allows me to specify, hey, I want to funnel all my website traffic through Burp, which listens on localhost on port 8080. So once I've set those configuration parameters, I am going to say, yep, let's use my proxy. And we're almost ready. But now there's one more thing I want to show you that's kind of out of scope for this, but it's important anyway. Uh, you will find that if you're doing, let's say, a regular corporate pen test of some kind that uses an HTTPS site, the minute you go to that site, you will see all sorts of SSL OMG warnings. And really, that's because Burp is man in the middling your traffic because you asked it to. So what you need to do is install the Burp cert if you want these SSL warnings to go away. And the easiest way to do that is just in your browser, go to http colon slash slash burp. And right there, you're going to see a link to download the CA certificate. So just suck that down to your machine. And then under Edit, Preferences, Advanced, you will click on View Certificates. Then you will import the burp certificate that you just downloaded. And then when you're asked, choose to just trust the CA to identify websites. Hit OK a couple of times, and now the cert is installed. And to verify this, we can just refresh the Google, and now it's no longer complaining about SSL junk, which makes everybody happy. Okay, so let's get started. Let's fire up Juice Shop. All right, as a reminder, this app sits on port 3000. And as we can see in Burp, Look at that, it's, it's proxy and traffic like a beast right now. So one thing I like to do is just narrow my scope because it kind of keeps clutter out of my face and just helps me feel a little bit more organized as a pen tester. So from the target tab, I am going to right click the URL for Juice Shop and choose Add to Scope. And then you see the Scope tab lights up. So I'm just gonna go under it and just out of habit, let's just say this was an HTTP and HTTPS site. I'm just going to change protocol to any, and I'm also just going to nuke any file or port specifications. And then back at sitemap tab, I'm just going to click that little kind of gray space below it, and I'm going to choose for Burp to only show me in-scope items. 
And once you click off that box, it should turn on the filter. There we go. See how it gets nice and clean? Kind of helps my ADHD a little bit. And then I'm going to do the same for HTTP history just to keep that organized too. Now if this was kind of a standard pen test and I didn't know much about the app, I would likely spend a bunch of time just clicking through the menus, filling out the forms, putting search criteria in search boxes, just to give this site a workout, so to speak, and give me a, a feel for how big the site is and all the different places that it takes input. But in this case, we know a little bit about the application and that there's a scoreboard where all our vulnerabilities get uh, tracked. So I'm going to look at the view source of the home page. And if we do that, uh, we'll find about halfway or two-thirds of the way down, uh, there is a little bit of a, uh, a hidden link here for us indicating the scoreboard URL. So let's fire that up. And I just love this because it gives us a nice visual representation of all the flags we have to capture, if you will, uh, a difficulty rating, and then you know once you accomplish each goal, uh, the scoreboard tells you. So um, I am going to go for figuring out the administrator account, either through SQL injection or uh, more standard means. All right, so one problem we're going to have right off the bat is that the username format is an email address, and we don't know much about what domain the administrator user might be associated with yet. So I'm going to just take a different route and see if maybe this form is vulnerable to SQL injection. And one of the ways I do that is first just feed the form some data in the username and password field and submit that so that it gets captured by burp. And now if we go over to burp, look under the proxy and HTTP history tabs, we will see our post request with our sample login data. I just used email of my email and password of my pass. Now I'm going to right click on this request up in HTTP history and I'm going to send that to Intruder, which is a tool you can use to automate repetitive tasks, such as checking for SQL injections. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the Positions tab, and as you can see, Intruder thinks, hey, is it the email and password field that you want to uh, snipe? And you could certainly leave them both highlighted. I like to just test one parameter at a time. So I'm going to hit Clear on the right side, and then I'm just going to double click uh, the data in my email field and uh, click add to make it a target. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to go under the payloads tab and because I'm using burp free uh, I can't take advantage of the uh, payload lists that it comes with but if you grab a copy of fuzzdb off the interwebs uh, it has some awesome payload lists that uh, you can load. Uh, and I'm just going to load this xplatform.txt, which has a bunch of SQL payloads inside of it. Oh, one more thing I almost forgot. Let's go down to payload encoding and let's not URL encode these characters since they are used in SQL injection attempts. All right, I think we're ready to rock. Let's hit start attack. And you're going to get a warning about, hey, you're using burp free so they're going to heavily throttle your requests to test for SQL injection. So for the sake of this demonstration I'm going to fast forward a bit and uh, I'm also going to behind the scenes shorten my payload list a little bit so that we can mo keep moving forward. Okay when that's done what I like to do is sort the payloads by length and then I start looking through their responses to see if the output indicates that a SQL injection was successful. So as we pop down this list, we'll eventually see one that uh, stands out as quite interesting. If we look at the bottom there, we can see an email address revealed in the page response. So this tells me I should try this manually and, and see if we struck gold. So I'm going to use this payload as the email address and then for password I'm just going to put in whatever I want. And look at that, we are in as an administrative user which is 
freaking sweet. Okay, so let's pull up the scoreboard and we should find that, look at that, we have logged in with the administrator's user account. And this is awesome because now we are well positioned to go after many of the additional vulnerabilities, even some of the fun two and three star ones. However, I try to keep these episodes at about seven minutes, so that's all we're going to cover for today. Thank you so much for watching. Please stay tuned. There's at least two or three more episodes to go, and uh, we are not going to let up on this juice shop until we have uh, uncovered every vulnerability on the scoreboard. Uh, my name is Brian Johnson, and I hope you have a blessed week. We'll talk to you soon. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye. You've been watching or listening to an episode of 7-Minute Security, a weekly podcast focusing on IT and information security topics, such as penetration testing, network configuration, virtualization, and career advice. For more information, visit www.7ms.us.